In today's video, I'm going to digitize and set up the Boston Bee logo and get it ready for 3D puff embroidery. And my goal is to digitize all the Major League Baseball logos and record and explain all the steps it takes to digitize all these logos. And if you're a channel member, then you could download the embroidery files and follow along as I digitize all the files from beginning to end. Let's get started with today's project. So right now we want to know, should I do the bottom layer or the, the top, the 3D puff layer first? It really doesn't matter whether here in this example, if we're doing the white part first or the red part. I'm going to do the base part first. We can measure our distance. Okay, so from here to here. All right, 1.73, so we're good. It's not too small. We're not working with anything small. But since this white portion is on the bottom, we need to have some overlap. Okay, so we're looking at some overlap here, all right, which is fine. Let's go ahead and we're just going to trace it, all right. Let's get a nice good trace here, all right. One thing about digitizing, it's all about tracing. So here, I use the open shape tool, but we could come down here to the edit and here, close curve with straight line. So it just closed up here and here what we can do, I can just copy, paste this here. So right now I have, I'm just doing the inside satin portion of the B. Now let me select these two, turn these into sand stitches. All right, so you could see they're right here. I want these sand stitches to be underneath the red portion. So underneath the puff. So I'm going to put an offset of Let's put an offset of 70, 30, 70%, 30% is usually the common one. All right, so now you can see I have my thread under, right, where the puff is going to be at. I know there's going to be push-pull. I want this part, this bottom part, to be visible. Sometimes it kind of hides in the mix when it pulls itself. All right, I'm just going to change this 3.75. And this is where... This is where you as an embroiderer, as a digitizer, all right, you're making judgment calls because if we were to digitize exactly as the picture is drawn here, our sand stitches might get lost in the mix. One thing here, you just want to make sure you get some good overlap, all right? And I just made it black so you could kind of see, uh, so you could see what's happening. Here, now let's do the outside sand stitch. Usually, you could just do a trace all around, but... I want to digitize these end caps separate. Let's do the same thing, column C, 3.75. Let's put an underlay, uh, center run, and zigzag, that's fine. All right, so let's go ahead. I'm going to leave these corners alone. I'm going to digitize those separately. So right now, let's just get a trace. All right, I'm using the column C, the steel stitch. Here, let's just fix our offset. Let's go 70. All right, that kind of pushes it out a bit. All right, here, okay, I want to have my corners kind of lapped up. So I'm going to go lap, lap corners. Uh, let's go to 80. All right, so I do want this corner to be lapped up, that corner. All right, this one here, so here, I'm going to just adjust it a tad bit just so I don't get a lap in here. All right, so it's straight up right here. Good. I want my lap there. Okay, I'm just controlling how I want these to kind of come in, all right? Now, let's go ahead and do the other side. Okay, we can just, we can stitch this out according to the drawings, and then we'll switch it up a bit. All right, H, let's control this, H. Now we could pull this up a bit just to just so it can match our threads. All right, then this will close itself. And if you have some gapping here, you can either, a couple things you can do. You could either just close it up a tad bit or we can also add T, all right, um, 
this is just optional here you can add a, a little closer right there all right you can put little closers there and you won't even tell that it's there okay just kind of closes up that gap here we can duplicate this let's flip it up pull it all the way up all right bam all right and then you could also adjust it here h all right everything is adjustable all right it just makes this corner look a little bit more sharper a little cleaner i'm gonna make a running stitch down to this corner here all right i want that to go first we're gonna go select this first select this little gap here select this line all right we're just going in the correct order that we want to go and go there go here go around do this cap last here all right put that sequence okay so I just put all that in order so this is gonna be the, the, the bottom satin actually I'll make it blue here all right so this is the base this is the non puff area this is gonna be overlapped by the puff all right so even though it's looking a little big all right you could also you could always control this so if it's showing too much sand stitch you can close it up well one thing we want to look at right here where we see trims we want all this to be done with no extra trims so everything being done all in one shot with no trims uh, in between we have it all in the correct order we could go apply closest joint and it put some cuts there so let's see where these cuts are coming from all right so showing three cuts but that's because so let's take this cut out h uh h here all right that's fine let's remove this cut because it could just jump from this from the center circle to the next one connectors trim after off and i don't need a tie off here because off all right that just removed this tie off and then let's focus here tie in we don't need a tie in that could be off all right bam all right so one two bam and then that one all right cool if you got any questions on this one all right this is just the base all right this is the base so you can see the base that's right below everything is controllable if you want it to be thinner you can make it thinner if you do want to make it thinner you could change it we're here with the column all right right now we have a 3.75 which is cool all right so let's go ahead let's hide this part of the sand stitches so after it stitches out this bottom part now we put the puff so we want to make a stitch to tag down this puff so we'll start it up here all right and when we're doing puff or just embroidery in general we want to know what's going first what's the order of operation to me that's really the challenging part of digitizing is where do you start where do you go next and we want to eliminate any unnecessary cuts any anything that's unnecessary we want to remove what i'm going to do i'm going to use my favorite the column b especially when we have these curves going happening here this is my favorite here we can start setting up our underlay and our underlay usually for 3d puff you want to go center run it's really the popular one as an underlay for 3d puff all right i'm actually going to go with edge run four five all right and i'll tell you why okay that's just um i've been experimenting with this one for a bit usually when we get some wide stitches this is when i like to use the the edge run actually let's take out this zigzag I like to use dense foam so it uh, the edge run holds the dense foam pretty good all right so now with this column B all I got to do is do one side first all right so I'm gonna do one side first and for me it's just less thinking I don't have to worry about the the stitch angles at this point right now all right so I just get a good one all right wherever we have a curve i'm just doing a right click and then wherever i have a straight left click and then let's go here same thing the only thing i'm doing it on the other side all right so 
here I got a sharp turn going all the way up here all right and I am going to uh, record all right so here my stitch angles are all jacked up but let's go ahead set our stitch angles now and bam all right actually I don't know why I put it at three put it at zero all right bam bam all right everything looks good so this one here looks exactly like how I want it to look all right you can really visualize and see that if any stitches kind of look out of place but everything looks good here we want to we're going to these are going to be long stitches so we're going to have a stitch come from here to here so we're looking at about five and a half millimeters long all right so we want to throw this i want this to be the long stitch here all right here so let's do one side first these are all curve curve curves then here at this little corner we have a little sharp corner and then back to curve curve curves all right we're going to take it all the way to this kind of middle point here bam let's take it and now we're doing the second side all right so we're going up here same thing all right just take your time get a nice trace here all right and then kind of gradually go inside all right bam and now let's set our, our stitch angles all right stitch angles do look good but let me just make sure that they really go now bam all right that looks good there all right bam and now let's do this bottom part and i'm going to break it up you're going to see how i break it up right now all right so same thing all right and i'm telling you there's there's a thousand different ways to do this all right so and bam and now okay so we closed it up here and now we're going to close up this spot right here now this is this is a critical point right here all right i think a lot of logos uh a lot of logos are straightforward but every now and then you have little critical points and let me tell you why this is a critical point because you can see the distance now all right or look at our distance when we start here this stitch when it goes all the way up here bam we're like in the tens potentially in the 11 millimeters all right very long stitches we're kind of going into no man's land right now all right so we want to keep an eye on that um usually i like being about uh below 11 10.5 kind of area all right so let's now let's go back like a couple stitches back a bit and then we kind of reassemble all right we do this side first bam now let's go ahead and let's do this side all right let's get a good curve right here and then bam all right see bam all right we are looking good right here now let's go ahead let's select our sand stitches and of course we want our density 0.18 it's like the sweet spot for 3d puff all right other critical points so i, I did put a critical point here when you're digitizing this is what kind of make or break critical points here all right potentially can be a critical point let's measure it usually when you're measuring that'll tell you um, if you have critical points here nine millimeters not too bad we're, we're kind of good in that area if we were to start going uh, 10 11 millimeters then something we might have to look into on hide and let's turn this into red just one thing that i noticed underlay uh, let's move it to a edge run all right so usually center run is the the popular underlay for 3d puff for this one just because i have little i have certain areas where we're getting long i'm going to put a um, edge run all right i'm using 
once again I'm using uh, dense foam so it doesn't affect it too much if you're using very light thin foam then you might want to stick to uh, to a center run underlay all right so here I had a cut which I don't want so by changing the underlay it added some uh, some trims so we trims it here star H let me just put my star alright so we're looking good here so what I would do is just make sure this one here H kind of bring this down clean this up a tad bit H all right we could clean that up one thing I want to add here let me show you this first underlay so this first portion all right this is gonna actually stitch out first all right uh, at first I had it just going inside here but you can also put a bridge here like a little mini bridge just so it could connect nice and good all right so let me undo that this one is ready to go so so here we're looking at trims three trims so we have our inside okay these two inside that's one our blue outside and then our red all in one shot that's really the, the way I like to digitize is just minimum cuts as possible all right uh, let's see stitches we're looking at 4224 so relatively nice and good so of course the real test is to actually stitch it out on a hat so let, let's check it out and you can see everything is looking nice and clean and what I'm looking for making sure I don't have any gaps I don't have any stitches that kind of look out of place and clean up of course with the heat gun once we heat once we once we hit it with the heat gun everything closes up everything looks nice and clean and also let me show you here I got a little preview here I got the Detroit and I got the Texas so I'm gonna make a video on these next all right so look out for that and of course if you are a channel member you are going to have these files available so you could analyze them dissect them measure them change them up all right and I'll also post the videos on all the digitizing on the channel members too let me know which video you want me to do next which logo I should do next all right and I want to thank you for stopping by I'll see you on the next one peace out